Hi, welcome to the 14 day UK weather forecast. April has been a very dry month so far, but finally there are signs of a change. I'll begin by taking a look at the picture across Europe and the North Atlantic. This is 12 GMT on Tuesday the 27th, and it shows outbreaks of showery rain in central and northern areas, but it's mainly dry still in the south. Through the coming days, that showery theme continues, and with winds coming in from the northeast, it will be cold for the time of the year. As we head through the bank holiday weekend, forecast uncertainty increases, and by bank holiday Monday, there is a risk of areas of low pressure pushing in from the west, bringing the possibility of longer spells of rain to southern and maybe central counties. On this GFS sequence, what we see is the rain really mostly heading down into northern France, although it does affect southern counties to an extent. As I said, but there is uncertainty, and if I show you the Canadian model for the same period of time, for the Bank Holiday weekend, we see something slightly different. By Monday, this deep area of low pressure pushes in from the west, and it's tracking across southern and central areas, and it leads to heavy spells of rain in, in the southern half of the UK. Also, with the tightly packed isobars shown, it would be windy. And we can see those forecast mean wind speeds here, showing values of 30, 40 miles an hour in the southwest. As I said, these are average wind speeds, so gusts would be higher. If it's correct, not a very pleasant bank holiday Monday in the southern half of the UK, more showery in the north, brighter too. But as I say, just how that low pressure area develops and the track it takes is still open to debate. Now, just come back to the first few days of the forecast period to look at rainfall totals as those showery conditions become established. The chart on the left is from Meteo France and the one on the right is from the German Met Office. They're showing total rainfall accumulations for the four-day period from Tuesday the 27th and the, the, the values are millimetres. What we can see is most parts of the UK see at least a little rain. Uh, values are ranging from at the lower end about three, four, five millimetres to the top end up to around about 20. So not huge amounts in the short term, but at least some rain in much of the country. If I show you the 10 day uh, accumulated rainfall chart from the GFS model, values in southern and central regions are up to 40, 50, approaching 60 millimetres locally. They are lower in the north. And I think the point to make here is the GFS, it's just, this is just a snapshot looking out to 10 days. It's not ensemble data. It's just from the uh, deterministic model run. So it will fluctuate a lot. It's only, I'm only using this to give you an idea of what the GFS is showing at the moment. I mentioned temperatures being low for the time of year with winds coming in from the northeast. This is uh, showing forecast maximums for uh, Friday the 30th, and we can see in the north they're in single figures, in the south around about 12 Celsius, possibly add a couple of degrees onto these raw values from the model, but even so, very disappointing for the time of the year. Overnight lows, well, the risk of frost goes on for a while yet. As we can see, this is Saturday the 1st of May, and places values are a little bit below freezing. I wouldn't be at all surprised if in the Scottish Glens they were significantly lower than shown on this chart, maybe down to even minus four, minus five Celsius. So potential there for sharp frost to continue for a little time yet. Daytime temperatures, it, as we go into next week, so this is Tuesday the uh, 4th of May, they remain low. We can see again here, single figures in much of the UK. Um, and cool in, in most of northwestern Europe, actually. If you're looking for summer, you've really got to head down there into the southern half of Spain, where it's 25, 26 Celsius, much warmer there. If I now show you uh, some of the deterministic runs 10 days ahead to give an idea of the consistency or differences between them, this is the GFS, so it's based on the data the first sequence was. And what we can see is areas of low pressure here, keeping a fairly changeable or unsettled theme across the UK. The blues there and greens indicating rather cool air staying in place. The Canadian model at the same time shows also quite a 
mixed pitch with low pressure there to the northwest. But I think the thing to point out here is we've got winds beginning to feed in more from a southwesterly direction. Those yellows and oranges indicating warmer air beginning to make their way towards the UK. The ECM model at the same time shows something relatively similar, though you've still got cold air across most of the United Kingdom. But these uh, oranges are beginning to approach, possibly. The ECMP, the development version of the ECM model, also fairly consistent. Once more, you've got this warmer air starting to feed up from the south, southwest. In actual fact, it's, it's, ma it's making more progress than, than it was on the ECM operational run. So I think taking all those things into account, there are some signs of temperatures beginning to pick up in the, in the sec, in the, through the second week of the forecast period. But I'll now take a look at the ensemble data to see whether, it, whether that backs it up or not. So this is the 16-day GEFS London plot, and on the top half it's showing air mass temperatures. You can see here it's cold for the time of year to begin with. And then as we head through the second week of May, there's, there's quite a big spread developing there. Some of the runs are keeping it cold, but a number bringing in warmer, or warmer air. And taken as a whole, the trend is upwards. We're getting back towards where we should be for the time of year. In terms of rainfall across the bottom here, you can see it's, there's potential for it to be quite wet there at times. In fact, as then maybe a little bit drier beginning in the early part of May, before it turns wetter again. So it does suggest there is an ongoing risk of rain, and that's quite different to what we've had in recent weeks. If we have a look at the Glasgow plots, fairly similar, although on the air mass profile at the top there, temperatures really stay below the thick black line throughout the 16-day forecast. And if you remember, the thick black line is shown the 30-year average. So it's, this is suggesting a rather cool or cold theme continuing in the north throughout the 16 days. So, so the warm-up or the return to average is more likely to be uh, in southern and central parts of the United Kingdom and less likely to make its way all the way up to the north. In terms of rainfall, well, it's the some showery rain to begin with, but then as we head through May, through the first and second weeks, the chance of rainfall increases further and it maybe becomes quite a wet picture, so significantly different to what we've had recently. I'll show you the precipitation data tables for London, so rainfall accumulations. Now, each of these columns across the top and the bottom represents a six-hour time slot. Um, the top half starts on Tuesday the 4th and finishes on Friday the 7th, and then the bottom part continues from Friday the 7th and finishes on Tuesday the 11th. What you can see is the light greys show completely dry conditions, with dark greys showing small amounts of rain, purples, blues and greens, and oranges and yellows showing much greater amounts of rain. So this is quite a different profile to what we've uh, seen recently on the, on the GEFS data tables. It's not very, very wet, but it is showing the likelihood of, of rain at times as, uh, ongoing through the 16-day period. I'll just show you the comparable uh, data table for Glasgow. Here, it's a, in, in many ways, it's a similar pattern, but at a higher level. The amounts of rain generally look to be greater uh, through this period than in the north than they are in the south. It's also worth taking a quick look at the pressure trends. So here's the 16-day GEFS data table for York. Each column summarizes one of those 16 days. The thing to really note is the increasing amount of green and blue appearing in the columns. They are used to highlight runs which are forecasting lower pressure. There is a little bit of orange shown there, which, which is used to highlight runs forecasting higher pressure. But the, the trend here is, is, is it's a downwards one for much of a period, um, perhaps just picking up again a little bit towards the end. I think there's some, some uncertainty as we get towards the days 14, 15 and 16 on, on this plot. But as I say, the general trend is a downwards one. 
which fits in with the idea of showers or longer spells of rain being an ongoing risk through this period. Now, two metre temperatures, here's the 16 day spread showing maximums for Berkhamsted. What we can see is it's cold start, it's the, temp the, the dipping to begin with, but then there's something of an upwards trend appearing and it continues really through the, through the 16 day period. But it's not looking particularly warm by any means. I've, I've put this 21 Celsius, 70 Fahrenheit line running across the top there um, as, as a marker for warmth. And what you can see there is there's only really two or three runs reaching it and those are right towards the end of the period. So it's not looking particularly warm. The, the trend upwards in temperatures is from a very low level for the time you're in. It's just really back towards the average. If we look at the minimums, again for the same location, on this chart I've put the ground frost risk line, so anything below it, any of these red spots below it, are runs, runs which are showing low enough values for ground frost to be a risk. In the short term we can see there are many, and even as we head through May, through the first, first half of May, the, the number does decrease, but it doesn't, it doesn't reduce to zero, so it's, it's, what it's showing is there's still a possibility of ground frost even in the south as we go into May, although it is a reducing one, as you would expect. Now, looking up towards Edinburgh, this is showing minimums as well. What we see here is in the short term, virtually everything, all the runs are dipping below it in some of our time slots. As we go into May, there is that upwards trend appearing there, but even, even so, there's, there's lots and lots of runs which are keeping it cold enough for frost to remain a risk. So not good news there for farmers and growers, I think. If we just look at the Edinburgh maximums, what we see is um, there is, after they are very low in the short term, but then there is something of an upwards trend appearing. But once again, there's no sign of it being warm on this chart. In fact, the 21 Celsius line doesn't even doesn't even, it, it's off the scale, this, the scale on this only goes up to 20. Um, so, so that recovery in temperatures, again, it's from a very low level, just perhaps edging upwards towards the average, but, but nothing at all special showing here for the time of the year, not warm. So to summarize the next two weeks, it's showery and chilly for much of week one. The nights remain cold and there's an ongoing risk of frost. Towards the end, there is a chance of longer spells of rain pushing in from the west across the south and maybe central Britain too, but confidence on that happening is low at the moment. Week two, changeable weather is favoured, so that leads to an ongoing chance of showers, longer spells of rain. Temperatures which start below the average may pick up somewhat, particularly in the south later on, but it's not looking warm. The risk of frost decreases in the south, so it's going to be increasingly focused on northern parts of Britain, but even so, it's not entirely out of the question that there could be frost still affecting parts of the south towards the end of this period. So that summarises it. I think the key take out perhaps is that it's looking more changeable than it has done for some time. There's a greater possibility of rain in all parts of the country. The amounts are uncertain, but I'm sure many farmers and growers in particular will welcome anything they can get at the moment. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks very much for watching now. Bye.